what if we drained all the oceans into the Mariana Trench through a secret portal and the entire earth is dried up? Will we be able to survive? No. Why? Because water is an important part of our lives. We know that almost 70% of the earth's surface is covered by the ocean water and therefore it is also known as the watery planet or the blue planet. Now, the water bodies are one that hold massive amounts of water on the earth's surface. So if we divide the earth into four equal halves, we see that only one fourth of the earth's surface is land while the other three fourth is water. So on dividing it, we see that the water that is on the earth's surface can be divided into 97.5% salt water and 2.5% fresh water which is a very small portion. Now out of that fresh water we have ice, groundwater, rivers and streams while the saline water or the salt water includes water from the seas. Now oceans as I have told are very important. Now how exactly are they important and what are the uses of the ocean? So the first and the most important use is that it maintains the water cycle. And how does it do that? Well, all the water in the oceans on heating up gets evaporated into the atmosphere, right? And similarly from the plants, the same evaporation of water is called transpiration. Now these water vapor goes up into the atmosphere and on cooling they condense to form the clouds that is known as condensation. So when these clouds cannot hold any more water or they hit a obstruction like a mountain they break. On that precipitation happens right. Now what is precipitation? The same water comes down in the form of hail, rainfall and snow. So when these come down they get collected in various depressions like lakes, ponds etc. So they flow down and they seep into the ground. On seeping down they somehow join the main ocean. Similarly the water that melts from the glaciers from the mountains also join the oceans. They together after joining the oceans continue the entire process again. The waters again get evaporated, again they condense and again they precipitate. Therefore, this is a cycle as you can see and it is known as the water cycle. Another important point is that the ocean produces over half of the world's oxygen that is very important and it also absorbs 50 times more carbon dioxide than our atmosphere right why is it so because of the presence of the marine plants that is present on the seabed of the oceans we know that the earth is tilted and also that it is spherical in shape but when you take a closer view you see that the rays of the sun hit directly on the equator of the earth while on the polar regions the rays are slanting or oblique. Now due to this the equatorial region that is the region near the equator is more warm than the region at the poles. So due to the higher temperature at the equatorial region, the water tends to get heated up and it forms water currents. Now these water currents that are warm tends to go up to the polar regions and there when it cools down, it again comes back here to the equatorial regions. Therefore, there is a temperature fluctuation. So, the temperature fluctuation in the water generates continuous and directed movement of ocean water and it is termed as the ocean current. Now, why is it important? Why are we reading about this? This is because, this is because the ocean plays a significant role in influencing the world climate. And how is that? 
So when these warm currents move from the equatorial region to the poles, they tend to keep the polar regions free of ice and also they bring moisture laden winds that cause rainfall. So when these currents cool down and come down as cold currents, they tend to help the equatorial region remain cooler and drier. Therefore, we can say that the ocean plays a significant role in shaping the world climate, right? Now, when these warm currents and cold currents meet, that place is rich in planktons, which is fish food. Fishes love to have planktons, that is their favorite food. Right. So, fishes tend to migrate to places that have plenty of food and a suitable weather, right? So, at places where the warm currents and cold currents meet, there is a presence of lot of planktons which attract fishes. Now, therefore, it becomes a good fishing ground. A very good example is the Grand Banks of the coast of Newfoundland in North America as you can see here. So if you look at this picture you understand that these are the cold currents and these are the warm currents and they meet at the Grand Banks that is a good fishing ground. Now so can you help me answer this question? Which is the major fishing ground found of the coast of Newfoundland in North America. Is it the Dogger Bank, the Grand Bank, the Great Bahama Bank or the Agarhas Bank? Yes, the answer is Grand Bank. Therefore, Grand Bank is a good example of a fishing ground of the coast of Newfoundland in North America. Another very important use of oceans. So, oceans have vast reserves of minerals like salt and petroleum. As you can see here, these are the salt deposits. Salt is used at a daily basis by everyone. Therefore, it is an important resource or important mineral. On the other hand, petroleum which is another very important natural resource is mined from the ocean beds, right? As you can see here, it's an offshore oil platform for petroleum mining. Moving on. So, besides these minerals, on harvesting the seabed, we also have other important minerals like cobalt and manganese. This is a cobalt rich crust and these are manganese nodules that are being mined from the seabed. Right. Important mineral ores are also found on the seabed. An example of this is the sulphide ore deposit as you can see in this picture. Right. So, oceans link distant lands just like land give us pathways to connect to different places on the land surface. Similarly, if we have to connect to different continents through water bodies, ocean help us to do that. Right. Therefore, Oceans link distant lands through sea routes. As you can see here, these are some of the most important sea routes of the world. Oceans also provide us with renewable energy like the tidal energy. Now, this tidal energy is cheap and very important as it does not pollute the environment. These are produced in the tidal plants that are usually installed along the coastlines as you can see here. So, they convert the energy from low tide and high tide into electricity. So, there is another way how we use the ocean water to produce electricity. How is that? The ocean thermal conversion OTEC is a process that leads to electricity production by using temperature difference between deep cold ocean water and the warm surface water. An outstanding example is this. The Makai Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion is in Hawaii and it is a power plant that helps in obtaining thermal energy from ocean water. So besides being so useful, it also provides us with the experience of adventure sports. And what are these? These are windsurfing, diving and snorkeling, right?
Therefore, today in this video, we learn how important oceans are. They help us to produce tidal energy. They also provide us with mineral resources. They provide us with food and adventures like snorkeling. It also shapes the world climate and maintains the water cycle. Therefore, oceans play a very important part in our lives. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.